Welcome to Finance in 5. So in response to my poll conducted at the end of yesterday's video, the public has voted. The first video that we're going to cover is on silver, but we will of course get to all of the other ones in short order. Thank you very much indeed everybody for voting. It's constantly surprising to me every time people comment on my videos because I had zero subscribers just a short time ago. So it's great to know that people tune in and subscribe. I'd like to add in here a disclaimer by saying that I'm not a financial advisor and that you should always do your own research ahead of making any investment decisions. The more information that you can get access to, the better. Now, plenty of information is available online which explains the benefits of silver ownership. It's sometimes hard to separate truth from nonsense however since lots of people making videos about silver on YouTube actually sell bullion themselves and so have a vested interest in promoting it to the neglect of other asset classes. The idea that silver and gold will go to the moon in value while stocks and property collapse in value is just not realistic. At the same time, look at how well silver has performed since March. It has rallied from $10 to 18 but what does that even mean since it's just a boring element that doesn't do much sat there except sparkle? Will silver rally in the 2020s? If so, when and by how much? How do you buy it and where do you buy it from? All of this and more coming up today on Finance in 5. So there's usually a lot more attention on gold than on silver. Why? because central banks primarily buy gold rather than silver. Investors look at gold as a safe haven rather than silver. Silver is more speculative, it's a smaller market. It's primarily a mining byproduct of other metals rather than a directly mined metal in and of itself. And it's a metal that has both an industrial side and a monetary side, with the industrial side being slightly larger. Electronic devices, electronic vehicles, solar panels, and a variety of other industries all use silver, and a lot of it ends up in landfill and doesn't get recycled. According to the Silver Institute, the annual supply and demand for silver is around 1 billion ounces per year. At current price levels, that means that we're talking less than a $20 billion annual market, which is really tiny compared to the scale of global markets for stocks, bonds, and real estate. The silver bullion market is such a small market that some wealthy individuals could easily corner it like Buffett did in the 90s, or the Hunt brothers, and it's a smaller figure than the annual revenue of the typical S&P 500 company. However, when it moves, it can absolutely explode, and therefore, it can make for a very interesting investment or hedge. So what are the five reasons that you should own silver? One, stocks are overpriced. Stocks have risen 35% since market lows in March, but silver has risen 41% between the 19th of March and the 2nd of June, rising from £10.36 to £14.64 per ounce. Whenever you're thinking about buying an asset, you buy it with the expectation of future returns. This means that one important consideration is what I like to call opportunity cost. If you have $500,000 or pounds in cash to spend today, there are many things that you can do with that money. You could buy a house, but if you buy a house, well, you forego the opportunity to buy 185 shares in Amazon. Or if you buy the shares in Amazon, you forego the opportunity to buy 11,128 shares in Coca-Cola. Or if you buy the shares in Coca-Cola or Amazon, you might forego other opportunities like being able to travel or increase your collection of antiques or comic books or start a business. If you had $1,000 and you were thinking to put it into stocks or silver, you would want to know if you were going to get a return. So we should ask ourselves at today's prices, are stocks undervalued or overvalued? Well, according to Jesse Felder on Twitter, financial advisor, he says that US large caps are the only country where valuations are significantly above average. They've been cheaper than this more than 90% of the time. That's a piece that he wrote for Bloomberg. And you can see clearly on the bar graph, what percentage of time has the price to earnings ratio been lower or cheaper than it is right now? The other thing that we can do is take a look at the chart of corporate equities versus profits. We can see that Corporate equities fair value has gone up massively. So in other words, the share price, while the profits have absolutely fallen off a cliff. The disconnect between stock prices and sustainable profits is greater than anything that we've seen in modern history, according to this author. I have to be honest with you, I think that the Dow could still rally in the long term, but there could be a crash coming in the short term. Right now, a lot of investors are uneasy. So how do you figure out if the market itself is overvalued? Well, interestingly, there is a valuation metric called the cyclically adjusted earnings yield, in which earnings are divided by price rather than the other way around. When the earnings yield is low, stocks are expensive. Price is high compared to typical earnings, in other words. This chart shows the cyclically adjusted earnings yield, that's the blue line, 
compared to the 10-year annualized forward outperformance of the S&P 500 over silver, and those are the gray bars. So what the chart shows us here is that when the gray bars are up or above the zero line, it means that the S&P 500 outperformed silver. When the bars are down, it means that silver outperformed the S&P 500 from that point. So as the chart shows us, stocks with dividends reinvested have outperformed silver over the long run and in most years, which of course makes sense. Growing businesses that produce cash flow should always outperform static commodities, or at least more often than not. However, at historical points where the cyclically adjusted earnings yield of the S&P 500 was very low, meaning that stocks were very expensive, which they are right now, you can see we're under zero on the right hand side here, silver usually outperformed stocks over the course of the next decade. So what that brings us on to is reason two, which is that silver is cheap right now relative to its costs of production. According to one study, it costs $10.45 to mine an ounce of silver, so the margins are finer than the metal itself, and you're not paying a big premium to own it. It really depends on where you get your silver from as to whether you're spending too much to buy it. The spot price of silver refers to the per ounce price as reflected in the markets, but you will always end up paying more than the spot price for an ounce of silver. Typically, the bullion dealer will charge a premium above the spot price, with that premium decreasing the more coins of a particular type that you choose to buy. For instance, let's say you wanted to buy an ounce of silver. Well, you could buy a coin, and there are lots to choose from. Let's go to the Bullion by Post website and choose one at random. Let's choose a Silver Britannia. This is a coin which is capital gains tax exempt. Now, what is capital gains tax? This is a tax that you pay upon the sale of an asset. Now, it might not be relevant for the average investor in the UK because you get a personal tax-free allowance of £12,300 annually, but if you were to make more than that £12,300 in profit in one year following the sale of an asset or assets, you would have to pay capital gains tax on that or sales tax, which is levied as shown in this table, depending on the asset that you're selling and whether you're a basic or a higher rate taxpayer. So it's important to check the rules for the country that you live in and to be mindful of the fact that these often change once a year. Importantly, capital gains tax does not apply to all types of silver and gold bullion. The whole point of mentioning it is because let's say you make a big profit in your silver or gold, you are going to have to factor in the fact that you could be forced to pay capital gains tax on certain coins. But there are a couple of coins which I really like, which you don't have to pay capital gains tax on when you make profits. And those coins are the silver Britannia and the gold Britannia. They are legal tender coins. They bear an image of the realm and they're exempt. It's possible to buy these coins at a price which is only slightly higher than the spot price, which is why investors like them. If you were to buy a silver Krugerrand, which is a South African silver ounce coin, or a Chinese panda silver ounce, or a Kookaburra coin, these might be pretty to look at, but the silver content is one ounce and one ounce only. So you're paying way above the spot price of silver for just a novelty design. The coin itself has the same intrinsic value, which is one silver ounce. Typically, the more coins that you buy, the cheaper the cost per coin. The drawback with silver over gold, though, is the fact that you have to pay VAT on it if you take delivery of it yourself. Silver bullion should be viewed like any other product. If you went to your local electrical store and bought a new TV, you'd have to pay VAT on that. You wouldn't necessarily think about that or recognize the VAT because it would be included in the sales price, but it would still be there. So investors should be aware of the fact that silver investment is different to gold, with silver being much more speculative. And unfortunately, yes, you do have to pay that VAT, which adds an extra 20% to the sales price. Now, this website, Bullion by Post, and many other bullion dealers offer customers the option of having your coins stored in vaults for you in Switzerland, rather than you taking physical inventory of the product yourself. It sounds great, especially if you're buying a large number of coins because you don't have to pay the VAT, although you will have to pay storage costs. So it's important to try and be aware of how much they're going to charge you. Make sure it's less than a couple of percent. The problem comes when or if you want to sell some or all of your bullion, you'll need to pay the VAT then because the silver will be crossing the border into your home country and you'll physically be taking inventory of the product. Bear in mind that you'll need to add shipping and insurance costs onto the price of the coins if you choose to take inventory of them. You could try and sell it back to the dealer, but they might offer you a price which is only very slightly higher than the spot price, meaning that there's a risk that you could lose money unless the price of silver has rallied considerably. These are all factors to take into account. There is one way of buying silver without you actually having to pay VAT. Silver stored in a bonded warehouse outside of the European Union, for example in Singapore, can be bought without VAT. One website I like for this purpose is Bullion Star. 
but the prices are slightly higher per ounce for large quantities. VAT is only due if you should choose to take delivery of your silver. But I guess the key point here is, after all of these costs are factored in, if the per ounce price of silver rallies to its 2011 peak or above, you could still be making seven or eight pounds profit per coin even after all of these taxes are paid. Silver rarely outperforms or underperforms by just a little. It's dramatic and makes massive double digit annualized outperformance or underperformance quite a high percentage of the time. It's usually feast or famine for silver, rarely in between. Right now, the cyclically adjusted earnings yield of the S&P 500 is the second lowest that it's ever been, with the dot-com bubble in 2000 being the absolute lowest. At the same time, silver is historically inexpensive. It's well below its previous peaks, and it's difficult to mine profitably at current price levels. If history is of any guide, silver has likely got a better decade ahead of it than the S&P 500 has, but there are no guarantees. So I'm bullish for the long run on some companies, like I've talked about in that video in which I mentioned five stocks to hold until 2030, which I should definitely, again, recommend that you check out. At the same time, there's not a whole lot to like in the US equity market at current price levels. So when it comes to gold and silver, gold right now is at eight year highs, but silver, yeah, it's doing okay, but it's not really rallying to the extent that a lot of people might expect. But the last 100 years of data shows us that usually when the metals move, they move together. And I would say that when gold and silver start to rise in all currencies, that's when you know that a bull market is coming. The chart below, or the chart here, rather on the screen here, shows that gold has been added into the previous chart. The contrast between gold and silver has been more about magnitude and precise timing rather than about general direction. Gold-silver ratio is a popular term. It's informative about forward return differentials between the metals, and it's a measure of how many ounces of silver it takes to buy an ounce of gold, with the higher figure meaning that gold is more expensive than usual compared to silver. Historically and unsurprisingly, silver has tended to outperform gold over the following decade when it starts from a historically high gold to silver ratio. Specifically, whenever the gold-silver ratio has been over 70 or 80 as it is right now, silver has historically been the better bet. If history is of any guide for today's levels, silver would be expected to outperform gold by about 5% annualized rate over the next decade, but it's unlikely to be a smooth ride. It depends on your outlook. Is it short term or long term? Because in the short term, gold and silver trade like commodities with big swings in price. But over the very long run, they're better thought of as stores of wealth. It's not so much that they go up in value. It's that currencies, including the dollar, the yen, the euro, all of them, they decline in value with respect to them. So since last summer, the Federal Reserve in America has been effectively forced to fund US government deficits through creating money. Stocks are historically expensive, interest rates are low, the Fed has to go from tight monetary policy to extremely loose monetary policy. Silver is still really cheap after a long bear market, so I'm bullish on silver over the next few years. And what are some of the reasons for why it's a good idea to own it? There are many obvious ones that we can all agree on, like that it protects your purchasing power because there's only a fixed amount of silver in the Earth's crust, and while some of that is used for industrial purposes, because of the time and cost and heat involved in refining silver to produce coins and bars, it will always carry intrinsic value. Paper money essentially is worthless because it can be printed endlessly at very little cost and carries whatever value the government declares it to carry. So it's fiat, in other words. Silver is also fungible, meaning that it can be exchanged for things of equivalent value, making it useful for bartering. While I've got no problem with owning gold, for a lot of people it's too expensive for them to buy whole gold coins, and it's not really practical if you wanted to use it to buy everyday items, unless you're Elton John buying antiques or thousands of pounds of flowers with every passing shopping spree. You'd need to be able to authenticate the gold as being genuine, so you need a valuer with you, but if you do have recognizable gold and silver coins, then that reduces the hesitation to accept them in trade. And if you ever did want to do your weekly grocery shop using precious metals, which granted is a seemingly unthinkable scenario at the moment, and hopefully one that won't be necessary in the near future or at all, but if you did, you could just buy everything you needed with a couple of ounces of silver. It has no counterparty risk, meaning that you don't have to worry about the value of silver collapsing. It will always be valuable, whereas currency, not so much. It's possible that paper currencies could be cancelled, and we might see this in Europe before we ever see it in the USA. The IMF has talked about all governments adopting a cryptocurrency and eliminating paper money. Moving to a cryptocurrency to stop the underground economy from using paper money will simply switch it to something like dollars or something commodity-based. So the point I'm trying to make is that once you eliminate the freedom that paper money provides, the government might believe that because it can tax and track everything that you do, it will get 100% of every tax it ever dreamed of and completely control and dominate every person's economic life. But in actual fact, the way that things will play out is that the underground economy will flip to barter. 
As far as silver is concerned, I would favor silver coins that are recognizable to the average person. Gold should also be in coin form, which will reduce the skepticism about accepting it in trade. I know that that was a bit of a brain dump, but my view is that, yes, silver is going to increase in value, or rather, currencies will fall in value with respect to silver. And one way of protecting your purchasing power is to buy silver while it's at a relatively cheap price. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much. And if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.